This is a quote from David Benatar's Better Never to Have Been. It is unlikely that many people will take to heart the conclusion that coming into existence is always a harm. It is even less likely that many people will stop having children. By contrast, it is quite likely that my views will either be ignored or will be dismissed. As this response will account for a great deal of suffering between now and the demise of humanity, it cannot plausibly be thought of as philanthropic. That is not to say that it is motivated by any malice towards humans, but it does result from a self-deceptive indifference to the harm of coming into existence. Now, <laughs> I think that one can dress that up in however academic... Uh, one can dress that up in as academic language as one pleases, but regardless of how you slice it, that is the voice of guilt. That's guilt speaking. If you've ever had someone um, systemically or systematically lay guilt upon you, you'll recognize it. You'll recognize the guilt in, uh, in Mr. Benatar's words. I uh, had a Catholic education inflicted upon me, so I know I, I'm pretty good at, uh, at you know, the little uh, antennas going up and detecting this sort of thing. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of guilt, if you ask me. It's, it means that you have a conscience. It means that you want to do what is right. Um, and it means that you sort of feel ashamed for obviously doing what your own conscience tells you is wrong. Um, and it leads you to morally question your own actions, which is healthy. Uh, but guilt can be a powerful bludgeon used to essentially enslave people. Um, it's uh, Guilt, if you ask me, is one of the most underestimated destructive things <laughs> in, uh, in in the, the arsenal of human mind games. Guilt. Um, and in the context of antinatalism, the, there's this huge amount of existential guilt, a huge amount of original sin and all this sort of thing. Um, just by being alive, we should feel guilty uh, because what we're doing is we're polluting the place by being here and that um, using our sex organs for what um, what they could be used for uh, is somehow bad. Um, the assumption being that uh, having children is bad and we shouldn't do it. Now, um, <clears throat> determinism um, strikes me as one of these sort of interesting insertions into any moral argument. Um, I mentioned before that my own uh, crise de la foi, my own uh, crisis of faith, resulted from my inability to sort of reconcile the insistence of the Roman Catholic Church with the idea that we all have free will and its parallel insistence that hell exists and I could conceivably be cast into it. This didn't make sense to me. Um, it, you, you, you don't have free will if you're operating under duress. If, uh, if someone's pointing a gun at your head, you're your moral culpability is reduced. I think we agree on that. Uh, or, and also, your, your, your ability to take moral credit for your good actions is suspect as well. I'm not um, helping this uh, poor, unfortunate human being uh, because I'm a nice guy. I'm doing it because I'm afraid that if I don't do it, I'm going to get cast into the fiery furnace after I snuff it. Um, now, this sets up sort of an infinite regression in people's minds when, when you get caught up in that kind of thinking because you question everything you ever do and you wonder whether or not it's possible to, be, to even be moral. Now, that's fine. Um, and I think that actually that kind of thinking, however difficult it is and however uh, disorienting it is, ultimately can lead you to a position where you understand or you get a new and, and stronger sense of personal responsibility and morality when you jettison the guilt, or at least you jettison the toxic guilt. But jettisoning, or inserting rather, toxic sort of guilt into a deterministic argument is, um, I hesitate to use this term, but it's cognitively dissonant. Now, cognitive dissonance is one of those terms that's been around um, for a while, but it's uh, turned in, it's ended up uh, being uh, used in a lexicon as a term of abuse. It's just basically a way of saying somebody's stupid. They're cognitively dissonant. But just because a term has been robbed of its meaning by uh, abuse doesn't mean that this, this term has no meaning. If you ask me, 
Morality and hard determinism are cognitively dissonant. I don't really see how it's possible to have the one um, in the same philosophy as the other. Hard determinism and moral judgments. Hard determinism and moral imperatives. Hard determinism and uh, moral obligations. The obligation, say, not to have children. Um, because when you believe in a deterministic, uh, uh, or at least a certain type of determinism, you're inclined to think that, okay, our initiative, any sort of initiative that we that we bring forward, anything that is usness that we bring forward, um, is simply a cause of something else. Any sort of action that I take that has no real moral significance, one way or another, it's neither good nor evil, simply because it's caused by something else. But again, if you have the idea of moral responsibility that is an essential part of it, you get into that weird logjam that I got into before when, when, I, when I was told that um, you ha I have free will plus I'm uh, going to be thrown into the fiery furnace if I don't exercise it properly. Um, it's, there's no sort of idea of free will. It's you don't have free will, but you're still responsible for what you do. And um, uh, that is a kind of underlying thinking in a lot of antinatalist, uh, a lot of the antinatalist discourse. You don't have any free will, but you're still responsible for what you do. Now, that's cognitive dis uh, dissonance, if you ask me. And I don't, I don't even mean that pejoratively. I, I simply see it as, as making an observation. We're all cognitively dissonant. Let's face it. We, we don't always do what makes sense, and, and we do often have a multitude of conflicting um, imperatives in our own thinking. Rationally and logically, uh, we do certain things for certain reasons, but there are other stuff that we do that we really don't have any idea as to why we do what we do because it does seem to go against our own principles. Um, and I, to, to do that is to be a human being. But it's this tension that, that creates this sort of um, hopelessness, this sort of paralysis that I have an issue with. Because I don't know uh, if you've ever seen this kind of person, but the religious neurotic who's in a state of complete moral, um, moral crisis all the time. Um, the person who sort of does understand that they're going to be judged for everything that they ever do um, and is constantly attempting to deal with that fact um, but they're also living in a world that adamantly refuses to be perfected and refuses to allow you to have make clear-cut moral decisions all the time that's uh, a recipe for a person with a lot of psychological if you ask me and emotional problems um, I've met people like that, especially in the Irish Catholic community. You'll see there's a, <laughs> seems to be a proliferation of such people. So, determinism and morality. Um, the only way that I can actually uh, see this sort of dynamic, determinism and morality, is in determinism, I'm either responsible for nothing, um, because again, I'm just a series of uh, uh, reactions to causality, uh, because I have no free will, or, bizarrely, I'm responsible for everything. <laughs> because, uh, well, if I'm responsible for, for something, I'm responsible for everything. And the third is the more, most difficult one of them all, but it's also the, the most, uh, seems to be the most prevalent. I'm responsible for something, and just something. I'm neither completely uh, off the hook, nor am I completely um, on the hook. It's somewhere in between, but the problem is, of course, where does my own personal responsibility begin and end? I have to take responsibility for my own actions. Yes, I understand that. But what imperatives do I have to abstain from doing? In other words, I, I'm being asked not to reproduce. That's you know, I understand that. I get that. That's been sort of beaten to death here. But what else am I supposed to not do? What else am I supposed to actually go out and do? What activities am I supposed to actively engage in and abstain from engaging in? Um, that is a moral conflict, an ethical conflict, an ethical crisis that inevitably results from the inherent cognitive dissonance of determinism and morality existing in the same organism. Um, I don't think it's resolvable. And I'm not trying to say that 
Um, we don't have any personal responsibility for what we do. But if we're if we, if deprived of agency, I do see that it is extremely, um, extremely dissonant, again, or extremely inconsistent to say, I have no agency, but I do have responsibility. I have no agency, but I do have moral culpability and uh, moral imperative. It's um, reconciling these two is uh, it takes a great deal of mental gymnastics, and that's why I think that a lot of the um, gaps in the argument are filled in by guilt um, and uh, appeals to emotion. Thank you.